SpaceX continues their work at Starbase Texas to put Starship into orbit, and one day Tesla robot may hop aboard. Starlink widens its user base, and the next launch is finally upon us. Finishing with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Starship 20 sits on test stand B next to what's left of Booster 3 as it awaits its ground testing regimen to begin and the arrival of Booster 4, which is still back at the high bay receiving its Raptor engines. But in the meantime, work continues on the sites themselves. At the launch site, the orbital launch tower has been equipped with quick disconnect attachment points. The QD arm has been under construction for a couple months now as it sits next to the tower's rocket catching arms. RGV snapped an aerial photo of the orbital launch table's possible ground systems equipment lines to spin up the Raptor boost engines. And the orbital tank farm to allow that to happen has gotten some attention as well. On Monday, a GSE test tank was rolled down Highway 4 to the launch site and was stress test with liquid nitrogen on Wednesday evening. It seems SpaceX has been encountering some complications, or at least uncertainties, with their GSE tanks, which led to this test that appeared successful. But work is being done up the road at the construction yard too. This week, groundbreaking occurred for the new Wide Bay Elon mentioned a few weeks back. He's pretty pumped about it. And it's also being reported that ground may also break for a new Boring Company tunnel. Boring representatives proposed the construction of a tunnel from the southern tip of South Padre Island to the northern tip of Boca Chica Beach a couple months ago. This would open up more access to the beach since SpaceX tends to have the only highway into the area shut down from time to time. While Elon's team seems pretty enthusiastic about the idea, Cameron County commented that they would not be funding it and nothing has been done since. And some new bonus Starship content for you. A new card game called Starship Shuffle is in the works and could use your backing on Kickstarter if you're interested. It challenges you and your friends to work together to build a Starship Super Heavy and launch it to orbit. Link in the description. I have no connection to this game other than that they turn me into a card. If you haven't heard by now, last week Elon and Tesla revealed their new idea to build a Tesla bot a robot that can be used to perform menial and dangerous tasks for humans. The prototype is expected to be built next year, and of course, like everything else Elon builds, he plans to use the bot on Mars, hopefully. A member of NASA Space Flight's forums took notes of what Gwen Shotwell had to say at last week's Space Warfighting Industry Forum, and it was all summarized by Cosmic Elf on Reddit. She's hopeful Starship will reach orbit this year, but doesn't know if SpaceX will ever reach full reusability with it. They're currently working on Starship window technology that includes radiation and impact resistance, and they've been standing down on Falcon 9 Starlink launches because they're waiting to build more satellites with laser link technology. Amazon is once again urging the FCC to deny SpaceX's plans for these second generation Starlink satellites. Turns out Bezos retired in order to pursue a full-time job filing lawsuits against SpaceX. But Shotwell also said this week that liquid oxygen shortages are contributing to the current launch law as well of course, along with worker shortages and chip shortages. LOX is used in conjunction with methane to fuel Starship's Raptor engines and rocket-grade kerosene for Falcon's Merlins. But it's also used to purify city water and treat COVID patients in hospitals, which is why hospitals get first dibs and people are being asked to limit their water use. Elon clarified that while this is a risk to the industry, it is not yet a limiting factor. Elon also informed the world that 100,000 Starlink terminals have been shipped as of last weekend, and is currently serving 14 countries, including New Zealand and Australia. Licenses are pending in many more countries. The next Falcon launch is actually this weekend, and it's not Starlink. A static fire of the booster for CRS-23 was completed on Wednesday at the Cape. They're targeting 3.37 a.m. on Saturday morning, and this will be the first booster catch attempt by the new autonomous drone ship, a shortfall Gravitas, which left port on Wednesday as well. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Thursday, Blue Origin launched their latest New Shepard rocket out of West Texas, GIF free this time, but carrying 18 research payloads, 11 of which were for NASA. as well as New Shepard's first ever art installation. The bulbous head reached an apogee of 106 clicks before deploying shoots bra to safely poof down in the desert. The girthy shaft on which it rode also landed successfully. 
that beautiful hover. And guys, if you want your girlfriend to share your passion for space, the lawyer wife recommends you gift them this flying new shepherd toy. It doesn't vibrate, but it does provide quite the thrust. Okay. Shit. <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but thanks for tuning in. Shout out to my eccentric members and patrons supporting the show. Do have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>